Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is a video of how I painted watercolor Sunset on the Pasture. We were very fortunate to take a recent camping trip to Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. The landscape was absolutely beautiful, and we so thoroughly enjoyed all the diverse views, including this one, which was right at our campground in the Shenandoah Valley where we looked at the Blue Ridge Mountains and particularly got to enjoy the sunset on them. When we returned home, I was full of ideas, inspirations, and a lot of photograph images. I hope you'll like it and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. Returning home, I happened into the studio and saw some scraps from a previous project. Now this project had started out sort of promising, but a dog had gotten a hold of the paper and tore it to pieces. Something about the light in one of the scrap pieces reminded me of our recent view. So I taped it down and began to paint. I started with a distant mountain horizon, and I got out a photographic image from my trip to Shenandoah to sketch in the mountain line. I didn't do any drawing for this. This is a small piece, and I was just playing with the colors and with the images. The colors in this little scrap reminded me of the sunset that we saw each evening over the pasture, right next to the campground we were staying at, where there was a farm full of beautiful cows. The mountains truly do look blue through the atmospheric haze and the coloring in the area. So I'm using a lot of blue, primarily ultramarine blue. After I painted in the horizon line, I softened the lower edge. And then I begin to work on the pasture fields. I found when you're doing a field or a large foreground with grasses, it really helps to observe how the slopes and the shadows are laid out. Now in this case, there were actual furrows, I suppose had been plowed, along with some sloping hills. So I'm laying them out with some shading. I draw in the line and then I soften it. Yes, I'm going right over blue in the foreground. That was already on the paper, and I liked how the colors looked together. It almost felt like the sky was glowing right through the field, as well as the sky. And I liked the colors. Now, when you're working on a torn-up scrap of paper, you could feel pretty free to do anything you want, and try anything you want, because it's trash if you don't. So that's exactly what I was doing. Painting with fresh memories for me works best. There was a low fence along the back of this pasture, and I painted some darker weeds that were growing along it. I also darkened some of the furrows in the pasture. I often use a scrap of paper to try out different colors that I'm thinking of using. And that's what you saw me just do. I'm bringing the sunset colors more strongly into the sky 
and I'm starting with some vermilion. Next, I'm working with some purples right next to it. And this is a Quinn Violet that I'm using. Where the Quinn Violet mixes with the Vermilion, I'm getting a mauve color. And this was feeling like a painting that needed some mauve in it. When you paint purple on top of yellow, those two complementary colors sort of cancel each other out and give you a gray. But the yellow was already there on the paper, and I don't mind some gray in my sky. Then I'm softening the edges with a damp brush. Adding some blue to my sky and then some more violet right next to it so they blend together. And I'm softening the violet as it runs into the vermilion color that's already down. So you see what my process is. I'm painting, adding more color, and softening edges. Adding the color while the paint is damp helps me to get this more soft look to the edges of the clouds as well. And so this part of the sky will go until it looks just right to me. Trying a little more yellow and finding the right shade to add. The yellow sure does brighten up the sunset.
And there it's starting to look like the way it's supposed to. And I'm becoming more satisfied with this painting. This is a fun painting. Now it's time to work on the pasture and the grasses. It could not all be that same pale tone, or the painting would not have been particularly interesting to me. I needed to make it darker where the slope came down and away from the sunset and more into shadow. So I painted my primary greens in that area. And I deepened where all the shadowed slopes were and the little hollows. I'm also deepening along the fence line. You see, I'm using a much darker green to add some darker bushes, which had faded out, and some line of darker grass that starts and stops. It's not continuous all the way across, and it's not all the same thickness, because nature is not, in my opinion, particularly regular. It's more irregular and asymmetrical. To bring together the background and the foreground, I then mark out where my fence posts are going to be. I'm using a small brush and some Payne's Gray for these little fence posts. Now as they go down over the hill, they are going to sink, get smaller, and a little closer together. Because that's how perspective makes them appear to the eye. And now, the focal point of the painting which is the lone tree growing on that hillside in a beautiful formation. I did not sketch this because the photograph reference was right in front of me and I just copied what I saw. I think I can't stress enough the importance of keeping your tree branches thin to start. Make your trees skinnier than you think they should be because it's easy to add on to them. Once the tree gets too heavy, then you're more limited in how you're going to paint it. You can always make things bigger with watercolor, but taking away and making things smaller is so much more work and it often just muddies your work as well. So start out thinner than you think. For my tree, I wanted the sky to show through the branches and the leaves because I thought that would look pretty and add sparkle to the area. If you paint your tree very solid and no light can shine through it, that's going to give you a different look. And if you're painting a beautiful sky or a beautiful background, I think it's nice to let it show through the tree. For this tree, I'm using primarily a mixture of Hooker's Green Dark and Indigo Paint. Because the tree is in silhouette and it's mostly appearing dark with little or no detail. Silhouettes are sort of easy to paint. But you gotta get them right. They have a nice color. And black is a sort of a harsh color, so I would suggest you don't use black for silhouettes. 
Rather, mix some darks. Mix some blacks. Use some dark purple, some indigo, some Payne's gray, some hooker's green dark. If you put these colors together, you'll start to get a nice, rich, deep color that's not the drab of black. And for a natural, more realistic looking painting, I think you want to stay away from black as much as you can. You could see I'm not really painting these little leaves on, I am dotting them on. I'm trying to use an irregular, an asymmetrical touch because the tree has not been manicured or pruned, it's just growing naturally in the middle of a field. I guess they leave a couple trees in a field for the farm animals to stand under and get some shade in the summertime. But it always looks so nice too. I continue to dot on the foliage and I'm continuing to try to make it appear irregular and putting a few random bushes under the trees along the fence line as well. With the tree painted in to my satisfaction, I then shadow underneath of it. And I'm using the same tree color mixture of hooker's green and indigo. Once the tree had dried, I saw that the colors had faded too light. So I'm going back in with a second layer or glaze of darker color. These glazes build the color up so it starts to get darker and darker to the eye. And that's what I felt was needed for a focal point for this particular painting. I'm also darkening the fence posts. I should mention that at this point, I have not painted thin wires between these fence posts. I don't have a brush that would go that thin, I don't think. And I don't think that you'd even see the wire at this distance, so I left it undone. It still looks like a fence to my eye. What do you think? What would you have done? If I tried to paint a thin wire and it looked fat and clunky? I don't think it would have looked very good at all. Going back in with my hooker's green and indigo mix, and darkening that foreground again where the hillside slopes off into shadow. And then softening it with a damp brush. I've decided to add a little bit of burnt sienna to the top where the green might be lit up from some of the sunset colors. Now you notice that the dark on the lower right complements the dark of the tree and distributes the colors around and adds a balance to the composition. And that's something that I'm trying to see all the time with my eye is if the composition is balanced. Darker colors appear heavier and add accent to a composition. 
if they're only in one spot in the whole composition, you got to check to see if you're balanced. It might be exactly what you want. It might also create an imbalance that is not as pleasing as you might wish for. Getting toward the finish of this painting, I am brightening the sky yet again. Another layer of, this time, chrome orange and cadmium yellow going on. Taking some of that bright color and dotting it into the little white area showing in the middle of the tree leaves. So they will appear to glow with that fiery sunset color too. And then I'm adding a little more foliage to the very perimeter or the outside edge of the tree. With that done, I'm calling the painting done and signing it. I hope you enjoyed my video, Sunset on the Pasture. This one was fun to paint. As I said, I was working on a scrap of paper, and I really had nothing to lose. I do save scraps that have pretty colors on them. You'll never know where you might use them someday. You could also tear them up and make them into a collage as you've seen me do in my previous videos. If you liked the video, please ring the bell. You can subscribe and not miss a single video to come if you look at the links below. you also see some links to some other sites that I have, including my Facebook art page and my blog, some products I make, and some products I like to use in my own art creation. Thanks for coming by. Please leave a comment and I will try to get back to you. And keep on painting and I'll see you next video.